no longer able to save marriages. And is the power of the cross and the resurrection. Let me sort of quote. I pray that the eyes of your heart be, under, be open, that you would understand that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead and set him over all principalities, powers, kingdoms, dominion, and every name that can be named, that same power has been given to every solitary one who believes. Folks, that is a reality. Do your people know that? Do you know that? Are you so caught up in that incredible power of God released in the resurrection? Where you believe all principalities and powers are already defeated. Don't teach your people to how to have spiritual warfare. That's already been won. Let them know how to live in the victory that Christ gave over all of those powers. Are you living in that victory? Is your life a demonstration of the awesome power of God to your children? I just, you know, all four of my boys are, and my daughter all called into ministry. The oldest son for 13 years has been president of our seminary in Canada. The other day he came to me and he said, Dad, in June I'll be 45. I'm looking at how to spend the last uh, 20 years of my life before so-called retirement. He said, I cannot see myself continuing as president of the seminary. But everything I see and hear and, and become aware of in what God's doing through your life and ministry, that excites me. So I'm going to resign as president of the seminary if you wouldn't mind if I direct your ministry. How would you feel? Those of you who know Richard, there couldn't have been anybody that could do it. So last week, he resigned as president of the seminary. You know why? He wants to be involved in the midst of the mighty working and power of God. Are your children so caught up in the power of God in your life that they want to choose to serve the God you serve? Or are they looking at our life and say, I hear what you say. I don't see any evidence of the working of that in your life. So I'd rather go with the world. That would deeply bring pain to my life if I saw that. I was just with our daughter in Germany doing church planting. What a moment that has been. Just to see their life in a most difficult area. Trusting what God can do. In spite of what God's people in Germany say. They believe God can do something. Then I went to Norway with my second son, who's senior pastor of the International Church in Stavanger, and heard how he is sensing how God is touching the NATO troops and the leaders and the oil industry, and he's starting a new church in Oslo. Everywhere I go with my children, there is a huge sense of the power and presence of God. Where do they get that? A lot of it from my life. That's why Jesus said, Father, I sanctify myself that they may also be sanctified in the truth. And then just another word for you. It is incredible what Jesus then says. He says, Father... I pray that they may be one in us. That is, that the disciples have an absolute union with Christ and the Father. 1 John 1 says, Truly, our fellowship, our koinonia, is with the Father and with the Son. 
And if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we will have koinonia one with another. So he says, Father, I pray that these disciples may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. And then again he says, Father, that they may be one, as you are in me and I am in you and I am in them, that the world may believe that you have loved them. So what's God's strategy for touching a lost world? God's people. God's people. As goes the people of God, so goes the reaching of a lost world. But I believe that one of the reasons why revival tarries, we have neglected the people of God. We have not helped that broken, grieving widow lady. We have not gone after that broken teenager. We have not put our arms around that sinning deacon. And when someone chooses to leave, we don't go after them. That is a denial of everything that God is. And when we let divorce happen in our churches, we deny the whole gospel of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5, he said, God gave to us a ministry of reconciliation. Should that happen in marriages? Yes. Should that happen in broken relationships in the church? Yes. Do you know why it isn't? We have neglected to teach God's people. When God's people once again return to Him, God returns to them. And revival breaks out in a people who have been taught and led into a vital relationship with the living Christ. And he is their Lord and his presence is being expressed through their life. When that is happening, revival comes to God's people and the lost begin to be attracted to God through God's people. It's like that passage which has been shared with you. How John the Baptist said how we're to prepare for an encounter with the living Christ. Luke's gospel adds this phrase. That all flesh may see God's salvation. Not hear about it only, but see it. Do you know what happens in your community? When the people of God are brought into a vital relationship with the living Christ and the Spirit of the living God. And God Himself with His mighty presence anoints and takes up permanent residence with His people. Do you know what happens when that takes place? It has an astounding impact on a lost world. I've been there to watch it happen. I've been there all over the world to watch it happen. Do you know why revival tarries? We have seriously neglected the people of God. We need to return as spiritual leaders to help the people of God like Jesus did. And use the afternoon to read through John 17 again and see the enormity of the purpose of God to touch a world by what he does with his own. And then make a commitment to God you will give attention to God's own, this closing word. Too many of the circles in which I move 